with Travis. People that can manage pitfalls and shortcomings in life are always the strongest people. Take advantage of every opportunity that you have to, you know, make yourself better. You gotta applaud the people's successes, man, so success can come your way. You know, positivity breeds positivity. If you can find a way to find what's unique about you, you, you can pretty much do anything. Let's keep it real. Most of these jobs are the pyramid schemes. To a certain extent, you can move your way up and become a CEO. You know, it's rare. It's very important for you to live your life to the fullest because you don't have a lot of time left. You know who fucked up real loss for everybody? Who is that? Flavor Flav, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I said it. Screw the government. What's up, ST? What's How you doing, man? On? What's going on, EC? Man, not a bunch, man. You know, just coming back. You know, we had a, you know, hope you had a great more day weekend, man. How was your, how was your weekend? Man, it was straight, man. I, to be honest, I just, you know, again, I just sat around, man, and just collected myself. You know, just trying to. Sit around, man. You didn't, you, you, so man, you, hey. you didn't, you didn't grill up, man, like everybody else be doing, and you know, not I don't know what the more they really about. You ain't grill no ribs. <laughs> <laughs> But don't get me wrong, I ate. Yeah. But you know, I got a chance to chill out with my Memorial Day. You know, a lot of people get Memorial Day mixed up. They forget what it's really about, and what it really is about is the sacrifice that uh, our people uh, have made to make sure that we can live the lives that we want to live. And it goes again without saying that we shouldn't have to have a government-sanctioned day to recognize these people. Because, you know, if you have somebody like I do, uh, my grandfather, he's an ex-Marine. So okay. you know, if, if you get a chance to let these people know that, you know, that you're grateful for what they've done, you should do that every day. And not just use, you know, a day like Memorial Day. I come from a military family and, you know, I, I see what my, my father and my sister, you know, what they do on a daily basis. I know it's not, a, it's not an easy job. It's a thankless job, yeah. really, man, because you know how. <laughs> some people be like man thank you for your service but you know they just they just say it just to say it but they just don't know what the sacrifice you know that goes through with it you know thank you for your service here's a card yeah yeah here's a, here's a card you know no here no here's 10 percent off of applebee's like <laughs> <laughs> applebee's like if you don't get your bitch ass out of here with that shit <laughs> with your old with your old small ass ribs that taste like sandpaper dog <laughs> Applebee's got some of the worst food, man, I've, I've had in a, in a while, dude. I haven't Apple, been in years, dude. Applebee's, Applebee's sucks. Applebee's is horrible, man. Like, how you gonna have rib? How you gonna have ribs and it be like riblets? Yeah, exactly. And like the, the bones, the bones are like, <laughs> look like like you know barbecue coals, and they got like like strip meat on it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they they really just they really just grilling up cat meat. That's right. That's probably what it is, man. The old bastards. Go ahead and get you some of this cat meat. Fifteen ninety nine. Fifteen. <laughs> and that's for the half. That's for the half rack. Yeah. <laughs> Full rack. Twenty two ninety nine. Because we gotta cut up extra cats for all that. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's funny too, man. Because when I was like, uh, I was rolling back. You know, I just got back from Florida. I was rolling back by Applebee's. And uh, I saw that joke was that joke was deserted. And I was like, yeah, hope yeah. it stay that hope <laughs> hope it stay that way. <laughs> it's time for this shit to shut down. Like, like, <laughs> like all the shit that like we grew up with is like going away. But Applebee's still here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah like, that shit that shit need to go. <laughs> why won't you die? <laughs> <laughs> Applebee's on that like that cockroach with like a nuclear like a nuclear uh, bomb on here. That shit still gonna be here. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Come get your nasty shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I know some mad people that be swearing by Applebee's too, man. Oh, for for what? The appetizer? Like nothing I, in there is, is tasty. I don't know, but they swear up and down that that place is, you know, that's that's what's hot. I don't know. Yeah, man. Like if you like, man, if you ever go on a date, you know, females or males, and your significant other take you to Applebee's, is the number one they don't like you. You need to end it right then. Uh, uh, number two, they're gonna break up with your ass at the booth while y'all eating. <laughs> One or two things about to happen. Because <laughs> it won't be at a table. It'll be at the booth. It'll be at the booth. Hell yeah. 
that was that nasty jump, man. He's like, yeah, honey, so where, where are we going tonight? Uh, we're going to go to Applebee's. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit. Is there anything I can do, baby? She didn't mean nothing to me, baby. She didn't mean nothing to me. It's too late, baby. What you want to eat? I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Apple>. over. <laughs> but yeah, man, but we are getting off topic, but you know, I just want to thank everybody that's a, you know, that serves in the military or you know lives in a military family. You know, you support, you know, your your you know sibling or your your parent as you know as they they do this thankless job. So you know, people can you know do podcasts or get on people can get on social media and twer uh and you know and troll and do stupid mm-hmm. shit and you know. And, you know, females can be Instagram models and twerk. And, you know, I have some to look at it, you know, during the day. You know, y'all made a <laughs> sacrifice for us so I can look at those twerk videos. I highly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Out here serving your country so he's holding a twerk on this, on this gram. I don't... <laughs> oh, I'm just playing, man. But, you, you know, man. But seriously, do thank you so much. Thank you do for the gram. Thank you so much for your service, man. We hope everybody had a great weekend, uh, a great week so far. You know, this is the new week of Wednesday Wisdom. Uh, you know, brand new episode of the Blank Canvas podcast. Oh, know. yeah. Episode 11. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, dog. So, we ain't really uh, getting into it. But, all right, man. So, I guess we go ahead and just, you know, get to the news. Yes, sir. Let's get it. <laughs> So a lot has happened, man, over the Memorial Day week, you know, like it usually does, or you know, during yeah. you know the past week, like you know, St always says, me always hit me up, man, after the episode, you know, goes up, you know, on Wednesdays on Stitcher, Audio Mat, YouTube, and iTunes, you know, we everywhere. Make sure yeah. you hit that subscribe button. He like, man, dog, like the news always pops off right when we post the episode. Yep. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot of news for you this week, so uh, <laughs> hopefully this shit don't pop off, man. So we're going to go ahead and start off you know, with a kind of like a tragedy, man. Over the past weekend, you had like a basketball player from New Orleans Pelicans die. His name was Bryce um, DeJohn Jones. And you know what's kind of yeah. crazy? Like when I saw it, I was like, man, how often do like athletes like in their prime get killed from like major sports? Yeah. Like, you know, NBA, NHL, NFL, et cetera, man. It's kind of rare. So when I saw it, I was like, man, like, how did he die? So it came out, he was shot and killed and was shot in the abdomen for breaking into the wrong apartment. Wow. Yeah, so what happened was he had a dispute with his baby mom. And he was only, man, the crazy thing about it, man, he was only 23, man. He was young, and, you know. And I don't know if he was a role player no, or he, what. He, yeah, he definitely was. He he was riding the bench. He was riding the bench, okay, for the Pelicans. But, you know, he had, you know. getting paid. He's still getting paid, man. He fulfilled his dream, what most people never get to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he he actually had made it. But so he had an argument with his baby moms, and she went into the house first, and then so he went into the wrong apartment. So it happened at 3 20 in the morning on a Saturday. You know, nothing really happens, nothing good happens at 3 or 4 in the morning. But he, he knocked on the door, nobody answered. And so he kicked the door down. Like, number one, mm-hmm. I don't know what the argument was about. No. But it had to have been a heated one. Yeah, it had to be. It had to have been a heated one where he was thinking in his mind, like, that bitch ain't responding to me. I'm about to go ahead and, you know, regulate things. You know how your know, people, you know, do, you know, let their, get macho, let their egos get in the way of things. So, yeah. he or kicked let that. Let anger take over. Yeah, let the anger take over, man. You gotta, you gotta remain calm, man. It's just a PSA for people out there that just have money. Like, if you're a woman or a man of means, you have to think from a totally different realm than regular people. So you won't lose yeah. what you have, because even him being twenty three, and him even getting like a like what a low end deal, like a low end rookie rookie deal, it's still six digits. Yeah. So you're still making more than the average person, man. You have to think beyond your nose, and if you're like a man or woman of means, you have to actually just think differently than most people. You should think differently anyway. Just yeah, keeping it know, real. Regardless, you're right. Regardless of which, yeah, regardless of what you have, you should think differently. Uh, because you know, at the end of the day, it's not that serious. Yeah, you don't you don't need to be losing your life over something that you know that that that's a not going to cost you any money, or b you know not going to end your life. So, yeah, like man, what what was his like? What was his cell phone at? You know, during that time, where he could have just called in. He could have called him and like, man, you know, he could at least been yelling like, "Open the door, bitch!" Or, or would have said something like that instead of just. Yeah. 
just thinking like, man, you know, I'm I'm this I'm this six four six five dude. I'm about to go ahead and regulate on this woman, and that shit, you know, this shit costs you your life. So he kicked down the door. The person that was living there was asleep. From what it was uh, reportedly was said, the person called out to him twice, saying, "Who was it?" But there was no response. And then after he said that, they said that the person that was in the apartment that sh- that shot him kicked down the bathroom door. So, and he just shot through his door because he was panicking. So, yeah. In all honesty, you know, he was just trying to protect him, himself, and yeah. you know, yeah, pretty much protect himself and his and his family. If he had a family in there, they they never stated that in a report. But it was it was his child's first birthday. They had an argument in the in the they had an argument in the parking lot. She went into the apartment before him. He went into the wrong room and he got himself killed over something silly. And he signed a three year contract with the Pelicans in February. Uh, he was on three 10 day consecutive contracts, them 10 day deals. Yeah. It sounds like he maybe he just came up from the development league. Yeah. And, and, you know, he pretty much they liked him. So, you know, he finally got his shot to just go ahead and stay stay with the team. Probably try to work his way up the roster. And, you know, man, what a waste. Yeah, what a waste. Because, like, even the, the, the coach of the Pelicans said he was turning the corner on his career. That's becoming like a, a prominent role player for the team. Like he averaged five, three, and one in 19 minutes in his 14 games he played last season. He broke his right wrist and he was out for the rest of the season. But he played 11 out of the 14 games he was available for before he broke mm. his wrist. So his his season was done. I, man, people that listen to our show, man, like we always stress, man, you gotta you always got to think beyond your nose, man, and just try to stay calm in these kind of situations. Or because yeah. your life, your life can end in an instant, man. His brother lost his yeah. life for something really dumb. Yeah, real real quick, like what's going on in New Orleans, man? This is the like this is like the third or fourth story that we've had where somebody's getting killed, or somebody's getting hurt in New Orleans, or somebody's getting oppressed. Like New Orleans is real bad right now. Yeah, man. Well, I know almost not for a fact, but I, I know there's no way they recovered from Katrina, man. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's true. But as but, far as financially. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, I would think, you know, since gentrification is going on down there big time, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would think that <laughs> so they, sad. yeah, I would think that they would have no excuse as, as far as like the economy is concerned. I guess the black people, you know, do, but, you know, but we know how that goes. Oh yeah, man. Cause what well, you can, you can try to cover up. You can try to put a band. You can try to put a bandaid on a deep cut, man. But the shit's still gonna bleed. Yeah, that's you true. Know what I'm saying so. Uh, you can always be like, yeah, man, we're gonna open up and just show different parts of the city that stage to be like, you know, New Orleans is back. And then you turn the corner and that shit's a damn cesspool and people out there begging for money and trying to find a, a find a job. Yeah. And you know, they gentrifying the area, trying to move everybody out. And those people have nowhere to go, man. It's going. It's, there's not not condoning it, but there's going to be crime. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, man. But you know, man. Like I said, I want just want to say, man. Rest in peace. Bryce, rest in power. Rest in power, man. Bryce Jones, and I just hope you know. Pray for the family. Just just hope you know that you get, you can get through this, man. And you know his daughter will just grow up to be a fine young lady and and try to you know work work <sighs> through this and and the mother. Try to, you know, you know, we don't know what the argument is about, but just try to, you know, learn from this situation as best you can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, let's go ahead, man. Let's go ahead and talk about something that was really could have been avoided. We talk about something that could have been avoided. Let's talk about this. All right, man. So everybody by now has heard about <clears throat> the gorilla in Cincinnati. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was <laughs> <laughs> that was shot and killed because some dumbass parents let their three year old son slip into the enclosure at the Cincinnati Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the funny, the crazy thing about it was, man, like people like try like putting their two cents in on it. So like Dio Hughley came out and said he was like, if you leave your kid in the car, you go to jail. But if you let your kid fall into a gorilla and capture, you should too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so true, man. Yeah. Yeah, and then like uh it was funny because Ricky Gervais uh said it seems that some gorillas make better parents than some people. Yeah, he's right though. 
<laughs> he's right. He's absolutely right. And and for him to say that is actually pretty funny because I find Ricky Gervais to be unfunny as hell. Oh yeah, dude, that dude. That, that, oh, I hate him, man. He's not funny at all. <laughs> but yeah, he that makes total perfect sense because most gorillas do make better better parents than people. Because I mean, you gotta think about it. They tell you all the time, do not dangle your kids over, you know, the uh, the enclosure. Yeah. Uh, because that's a hazard that, you know, your kid could fall in there and then there you go. We have to, you know, either sedate or kill our animals. But, yeah. you know, every, every time you turn around, it's some idiot that keeps doing the same thing that everybody else does. And I know they see these stories on TV. Like, I know they see yeah. them. Yeah, so, man. Why would you do that? Why would you continue to do something <laughs> so stupid? So stupid, dude. Why would you dangle your child over any wild animal that the number one don't doesn't want to be there, and number two probably plotting and trying to find <laughs> a way to get out or hurt somebody that they see, and like while they're there, like the gorilla was a rare four hundred fifty pound gorilla, so they killed a rare breed of gorilla first of all. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And then second of all, they put their kid in danger. The kid could have died. And then there's a there's a two minute video that y'all need to see. That's you know, it's it's, it's kind of it's 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 not. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of messed up, man. But the gorilla like takes the kid, is like dragging the kid through the water by his by his leg, like back and forth. Like, what you doing in here? Why you in here? Why your parents dumbasses? I gotta teach up a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought we was playing, huh? <laughs> but man, now because the parents was freaking dumbass, and I said yes, they are dumbasses, and they and they should lose their child to protective services. Keep it, they really should lose their child. Their yeah, child the should go to the alive? Yeah, the kid's still alive. Yeah, the kid made it out. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. But because they, they had to kill him. Yeah. So they killed the gorillas to rescue the child. But the crazy thing about it was, I was listening to the radio when I was driving uh, home from Florida. It was like, why didn't they just, to save the to save the gorilla, why didn't they just tranquilize him? And then, uh, then like, it was like an expert zoologist uh, on the radio. He was like, do you know what happened? If he's holding that child as a 450 pound gorilla and he gets tranked, he's going to be angry. He could have hurt the child. Like he could have like held the child and split the child in half. Like, <laughs> <laughs> trying to fight off the painkillers. Yeah, trying to fight off the painkillers. Yeah, man. So in those situations, you said you have to put the gorilla down as quick as possible to save the child. So it was like it was sent like it was a senseless death of an animal. Yeah. For, for no reason. You know how people, you know, they just clamor over animals. You know how much they love animals. Yeah, but they but... they constantly put them in danger by put tossing the kid into a damn enclosure, grill enclosure. It's stupid. Yeah. So I wonder I wonder if Peta, you know, has something to say about this whole incident. If not, you know, why do we really hold so much so much grief over animals like you know like, like they normally do? Yeah. And some people came out on Twitter. Oh, okay. Peter Peter did came out and said Peter said, um, they, their stance has always been that captivity of any animal is not acceptable. So they didn't. Yeah. They said, so they said the gorilla shouldn't have been <laughs> captive to begin with. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm glad to see that they actually stick to that ground, you know, because, you know, <laughs> it, uh, according to them, man, you killed an animal. You you deserve to die more than, you know, anything. So or, uh, somebody, uh, or go to jail. Yeah, somebody put out an interesting tweet. They said, humans in prison gorillas. Humans enter gorilla prisons. Gorilla gets shot dead for being near humans. Humanity is a, is a disease. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, man, that's true, man. This is so stupid. Yeah. And some other person came out and was like, CNN ass was shooting the 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 red gorilla. Only the only option for the Cincinnati Zoo. And the person said it was the best decision to guarantee the safety of the kid. You really want to risk a human's life for a gorilla? Stop it. Like so, you know, everybody's gonna have their views, but you know what my view is? What? The child should have been hang- been should have been dangling over the fucking enclosure. Yeah, that's what my fucking view is. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, but like you gotta think of it this way, you know. Um, it's actually kind of we we're so backwards, man. Yeah. Like you know, if that kid grows up and you know kills an animal, then he'll be looked at as you know a deviant. Or you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess you know, malicious. But we gotta find a, a happy medium, man. 
Yeah. Between, you know, what's right and what's wrong between humans and animals. Because it's it's so convoluted right now. We can't we can't decide, you know, what which life holds more value. And I don't know, man. I'm I'm so sick of, you know, these stories. But so you know, it it's just I don't feel sorry for the parents. I don't feel sorry for the kid. I feel nope. sorry for that gorilla. I do too. Because, you know, it's just like it's just like the tiger who got killed because some other idiot was dangling their kid over an enclosure and they fell in. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, man. Speaking of a tiger, man, I, uh, <laughs> I went out. I went out to my uh, my cousin's house and they showed like a video. It's like an old uh, Animal Planet video where this guy like brought this tiger to Harlem in his apartment. And it's wow. like a it's like yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. story. You heard, yeah, you heard yeah. that junk? Yeah, I did. Yeah, man, it was kind of it was kind of sad, man. Cause they interviewed the guy. You could tell, like, you kind of tell that life has beaten them down. He was like, man, you know, I finally kind of felt a real connection with Ming. And that was the name. That was the name of the. That was the name of the, of the tiger, man. He had a forty. Yeah, he had a forty five hundred pound tiger in his Harlem three bedroom apartment. Yeah, and it grew. It outgrew the apartment. Yeah, dude, and like. <laughs> The 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 tiger, you know how tigers are predatorial. They shouldn't be in an apartment to begin with. But he attacked mm-hmm. like his other kitten. He was mm-hmm. like, I had to, I had to get in between them, man. I had to, you know, I had to save the kitten. We should all live in harmony. And I was like, wait a minute, number one, like how are you feeding this tiger? Number, and number no, yeah. number number one, it's a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> number one, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tiger. You jackass. Yeah, like. He was like, man, I've always, because they show a picture of him when he was younger. It's like, man, I've always like felt at peace being being with animals. And they show him like with the boa constrictor when he was seven. And they showed him with some hamsters or whatever. And then you know they had to, you know they had to make it, you know, coonish. They had like they had his brother. He just got had got out of prison. And they were like, yeah, man, so I'm coming back home from the pen. And he's like, I'm walking to the house and I see somebody big eyes like cue balls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, what are you? <laughs> I, like, I shook my head like, dude, you ain't gotta be talking like this, man. Come on, man. Cause you know, you know they greenlit that shit when he was start talking. He's like, oh yeah, this this going on now. Like, hey man, we got, we got stuff that's been sitting on the shelf for like ten years. This going up now, Jim. This shit's going up now. <laughs> and I was like, man, I can't watch no more of this shit. And I'm like, walked out. <laughs> But man, like the dude, like, in the end, they trained the uh, the tiger and they took the tiger out and put him back in his natural habitat. And the dude had, took had uh, had to go to jail. I forgot how long he went to jail for. I think like two three years cause for you know endangerment to the peace to the um, um, to the people that are, were around him. Cause that tiger would have gotten out, he could have killed a lot of people. Like he was on like the ninth floor, so the tiger has to like you know he will do some damage trying to get out of there. Cause first of all he'll know how to get out, so he's gonna just be tearing up whatever he sees. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, speaking of that, speaking of just animals, just not needing to be around humans to begin with. I think that the best route is to, you know, if you want to see animals and you have the money to see them, I think you should go on safari or just go into the natural yeah. habitat and go and see the animals. That's how it should always be. I don't feel there should be any zoos. I think aquariums are okay, but that's still inhumane. Mm-hmm. You know, that's still inhumane to a certain degree. Well, it, it just boils down to the point that people are stupid and, you know, people, <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, it's just always going to be some idiot who, you know, wants to have everything. We're just not going to get past that, you know, so and and as long as people start realizing that, you know, maybe a wild animal doesn't belong in your apartment, <laughs> then, you know, these... <laughs> These things are gonna keep happening, people. Yeah, uh, dog man, like, what was on your, what was on your bird, man? I think this shit was just, this shit was gonna work. I like, mean, we had a, we had a, we had a deep connection, like deep connection. Me, me and Coco loved each other. <laughs> <laughs> and Coco realized I'm bigger than you, and I can knock your ass down, and I, and I, I know I'm superior to you. Uh, shit, your ass gonna be my pet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but man, that's enough of that, man. But you know, just uh. Yeah, smarten up. Just, just you know, don't don't dangle your kid over a gorilla enclosure. 
either the kid like laughing and telling me to telling you to do it. Don't be a don't be a slave to your kid. Yeah. Be an adult. How about exactly. that? What's wrong, with, what's wrong with being a fucking adult? All right, man. I'm done. Be a parent. <laughs> yeah, be a parent, man. Shit. Some people shouldn't even have kids, man. Jesus. <laughs> but another another thing in the news that happened, um, which I found was, you know, quite, you know, not anything I was really surprised by, keep it real, man, was, you know, the incident that happened in Baylor where they mm-hmm. fired the head coach and the AD because they tried to cover up so many sexual assault scandals that they had at their school, <laughs> you know, dealing with the football players. People in Texas, man, I lived in Texas for last year. I lived in Texas for like six months, man. And keeping it real, when people say, like, football's king down in Texas, man, this shit's true, man. Like, high school, yeah. like, <laughs> some, like a couple of high schools I passed by had better practice facilities than I've, like, I've seen, like, regular, like, stadiums. Yeah. Like, like, reg- like regular, like, regular, like, you know, college stadiums I've seen in some states, man. Like, yeah. football is king down there. So, it doesn't really surprise me. To see the cover up that they tried to, you know, the cover up that they did for their athletes for so many years because they were winning, they were prominent. If you kept up with college football even a little, you've heard of Baylor, yeah, because they were winning and they had such a special kind of spread offense. And when you're winning, man, you can kind of get away with a lot of things, man. But it was just like girls were just filing a lot of Title IX um, reports about sexual assault about their players, and it, mm-hmm. it went as, it went as deep, man, as like the police. In Waco, yeah, but was helping to cover up. From what I read, it was yeah, it was the school's own police department. Yeah, they were claiming to take care of you know these incidents, and all they would do is just sweep them up under the rug. So I was like, yeah, ah, dog, man, like another another human being, like man, it's just like they could just get away with anything, just be. Yeah, like, players just be you know almost quote unquote savages, man, and just take what they want yeah. and, and from, without, from, without any repercussions. Uh, the NBA repercussions, as long as you can tackle and throw the ball and catch the ball well, man, you can you can get away with it. Like, how can you how can you be coaching on the sideline knowing like this shit's going on, man? Like, you got to have no conscience whatsoever. It's what we call the others. Yep. <laughs> 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 they they <laughs> they have no conscience because at the end of the day all that matters is what's in their pocket. Yep. You know? Getting over on folks. That's that's yep. all they care about. They they don't care about your little daughter, you know, uh if if you got, you know, daughters that go to school down there, they don't care about them cuz they ain't worried about them. They only worried about what their football program can do and how much money they can make. Or so, how common they are on ESPN. They talk about on ESPN, but you know, like that's crazy, man. Because some of them, some of them girls, well, you know, like Baylor was their first choice. Going yeah. to school, they took cabin's visits. Like, man, my whole life's going to change. I'm going to Baylor, man. I'm about to, you know, I'm about to live the life, and you know, and just go to one party and they just get sexually assaulted, and they go tell yeah. the stories like, oh no, you lying, man. You drunk. You wanted it. Bye. Like, dude, that's yeah. got that's got to feel. That's got to be terrifying, man. Yeah. That'd be terrifying to to go to somebody. You think you're going to somebody that serves and protects you, which they really don't. They you know they they pretty much protect the institution. Yeah. They tell and you tell them something that happened to you that's traumatizing to you, and they just they just act like you know it just doesn't happen, man. That's 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 horrible. Yeah. So I I guess the biggest thing is just to see what kind of sanctions the NCAA will put on Baylor. It, it, you know. Um, I guess they could ban them from postseason play, but that really doesn't matter because they pretty much can do that on their on their own. They don't need the NCAA's help uh, with that because they barely even make the playoffs every year. So yeah, um, man, they like on, they, always, they always like the, the border team that don't make it no way. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> all the karma getting their ass too. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't really know if banning them from postseason play would be a punishment. So <laughs> yeah, I know I need to tack on some. Some scholarships, like hit them real hard with scholarships, man. Or, or hit them with that, uh, the death penalty. Yeah, I know, man. I like one day, uh, one day a school's gonna do something extremely horrendous to get hit with the death penalty, man. And I just wanna, I wanna be I mean, for that day so we can talk about it and laugh. <laughs> SMU, yeah, yeah, that's true. But SMU has gone through the death penalty. Yeah, uh, I forgot who else did. Miami, not so much. No, nah, they uh, they came close, man, with all this shit they were doing, man. That's yeah. wild down there in Miami. 
Go Canes. Um, <laughs> Do you? <laughs> That's right. I'm a fan. Yeah, man. It's it's crazy. Every year is always something different. It's always something new as far as, you know, NCAA violations with, you know, sexual assault allegations, man. It's always something. Um, so it's just going to be interesting to see what takes place from here. Yeah, man. Like one person said that the university statement said the review was a fundamental failure from top to bottom. Ooh. As far as just everybody was just trying to just, just cover it up. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, man, just we got we got a good thing rolling here, man. Let's just go ahead and just keep it going. Yeah, we, we, we you know the boosters are you know giving us money left and right, and you know yep. pretty soon we're going you know we're gonna get pretty good money on this TV network. We in we in business. So yeah, man, like you like you said, man, it's all about that mighty dollar, man. It's not about what, not about you know just just human beings, man. They know about the damn number, yeah. man. That's that's it. They know about the number, man. Yeah. No one, no one cares, man. It's, oh, nobody cares. It's, it's, it's the others, man. Watch out, watch out, man. They, uh-huh. they, they, they out there. <laughs> yeah. And, and they don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you a clown, man. That's just so true, though. That shit is true. But, um... Man, another thing that was crazy that uh that you know speaking of you know not giving a fuck and fucking up, man. What's up with the uh the NBA putting out tickets for you know the NBA finals like well, even before Game Seven hit, Warriors <laughs> playing the Cavaliers in Game One of the finals. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody please tell me, please tell me that there's no such thing as an NBA conspiracy. Please tell me that. Dude, now, now everybody came out the woodwork for that joke. You know the conspiracy theorists came out the woodwork for that. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> y- y'all want y'all want LeBron to go back down again? Yeah. Like, dude, that was a that was a huge fuck up, man. Yeah, that was it was a huge fuck up, dude. Like, like whoever was in charge of like the website for NBA tickets needs to be reprimanded or fired. Because you know the Warriors were down three one, and they come they came all the way back to force a game seven, which kind of you know shows their greatness to a certain degree. But you don't want to do yeah. anything with sports, like you don't want to mess up with anything in sports. Because the one thing that people love about sports is it can't predict it. Yeah. And when that one thing comes out of nowhere, where it's just like <laughs> there's like somebody messes up and somebody just runs with it, talking about oh it's a conspiracy. It kind of you know in some people it eyes it takes the game. Yeah, or it could take the game, man. Just think, man. Think about it, man. What happened if, what happened if this joke was rigged, man? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, well, we've we've <laughs> had we've had a couple instances in which you know we kind of had to second guess the NBA. All right, because you know, um, what's the name of that NBA ref that went to jail for a long time? I think it's Tim Donahue or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was his name, man. Yeah, so that was, I mean, that was the first instance, and you know, he was infamously known for you know not calling calls or <laughs> or calling calls that didn't make sense at all and and then you had another incident it was back in i think it was the mid 2000s but it was you know the western conference finals with you know your lakers and the sacramento kings and this was the year that the sacramento kings were red hot you know i mean like they were ripping through everybody and then it was just like it was so apparent that they weren't getting calls like late in the game and then some of the smallest stuff the Lakers were getting calls for. So, <laughs> I it it just there's something there that that just tells you, okay, something's got something's up. Like the NBA's got to be rigged somehow, dude. Like if you think about it, man, if it, if it was rigged, dog, do you do you like how do they keep people quiet? Because you know people love to talk, man. You know they love to talk, man. You can tell somebody like, hey. Like, don't tell nobody, man. But, I'm, but you know, I'm laying it with such and such. Like, okay, man, I got you. And then yeah. about two seconds later, like, man, he smashes, he, he, sm- he smashes Monica, man. Oh, shit. Yeah. Tell everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, like, if you think about it, yeah. the whole the Tim Donahue situation, when he, you know, he pretty much threatened to come out. And you see the NBA totally distanced themselves from him. Yeah. Like, all the way. Like, they have absolutely nothing to do with him. 
because he knows. I mean, and, and I think from his position, mm. it's, you know, I, I could tell the truth. I could air the NBA out, but, you know, no one would believe me. Yeah. So that's probably where he is right now. So, you know, and when you have a big entity like the NBA, you know, come on now. It, it's the machine versus the man. Who's going to believe the man? Uh, yeah. Or it could be some, or it could be like, it's it's the bullet versus the man. And he, he wants to live. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, like he's approached by a reporter to talk about the situation, he just see like a little red laser beam and you like hit his forehead. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to talk? No, nah, man, he gets a pizza, man. You know, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of hungry. I'm like, man, why are you sweating so much? Let's get the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, she got stomach all bubbling. Y'all, y'all nervous. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Like that man. It was. It would be crazy if all sports was pretty much like everything was like predestined. Everything was already set up. That would be. That would be insane, man. That would be mind blowing, man. And, like that, you know, some people. Some people would lose their shit. They would like tear down all their stuff, all their posters, all their like the yeah. cards. Some people <laughs> would probably commit suicide. Some people would be like, man, nothing to live for. Everything's a lie. That just would blow a lot of people's minds, man. Especially if you're like a fan of a team that, you know, never won the big one, but they were always like real, real close. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, it would it would be catastrophic, you know, to learn that, you know, everything was all a hoax. So. Yeah, like they go like to like a dark ass dungeon in the middle of a, in the middle of a night and they just like <laughs> roll the dice and be like, all right, who will be the hot team? For this season. And then, like, Adam Silver down there, like, rolled the dice. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, like, one side be Golden State, one side be the Cavaliers. It's like, hmm, it's Golden State time. Make sure it's done. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how can you live with yourself, man? That should that should be crazy. It would, though. Man, all that money being spent, people will feel like they've been betrayed. You know how, you know how people get crazy over shit. I would kind of, like, yeah. get over it. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. So basketball is like wrestling. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, I just be like, man, damn, like all this, all this up with the lie for all these years. I would commend them for keeping up the lie for so long and not getting caught. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, man, well, props to y'all for not getting caught all this time, man. Shit. <laughs> like, y'all need to teach me, to, you know, y'all need to teach people the ways of how to shut the fuck up. Or you're like, how many people did y'all ice over the years or, or quiet to keep yeah. this young, you know, because people are going to talk, man. Yeah, especially if it was people that were that were promised some things. Hell yeah! Was <laughs> how people snitch. That's always yeah. people snitch. Yeah. So yep. you know they didn't get you know what they were promised. So you know there you go. Oh no, he's he's crazy. Don't listen to him. <laughs> I had to do was like you better cut this check, man, or some shit about to go down. <laughs> ain't cutting shit. I'm like I'm about to come out then. Like next next couple of weeks, they do a smear campaign on your ass. <laughs> yeah. That's how that shit works, man. Shit like oh. pop, right? <laughs> <laughs> Or they turned up mysteriously murdered. Hell yeah. Like, or like they died of like a mysterious disease. Or they like, <laughs> it was suicide. He was hit by a car. It was AIDS. Like, which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was all of it. Like, Herb and cremate him and get him out of here. <laughs> like, she did an autopsy. Yeah. Oh, man, that shit, be, that shit would be crazy, but. Yeah, they they need to watch it, man. Even if it was, you know, even if you know, there was, it seemed like it's just a just a modest mistake, man. But you gotta watch that kind of stuff when it comes to sports, because people are people are literally people literally get in fights fights over sports for they would their own family member. Yep. Like walk into like a random like a random store, and be like, man, LeBron, Ben, and MJ, and not watch you catch a fade. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yep. <laughs> like 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 with the quickness, man. With the quickness. Yep. Man, man, don't mess with people in their sports, man. Cause that's that's some, you know, that's yeah. some, some people that's all they have. Man. That's what that's what defines them, man, you know. Especially down south. Oh yeah, dude. Don't don't talk about no no Bama football. Don't talk about talk about how their team sucks. Uh like what else, what else like diehard? Like man, Bama, like I think Alabama fans are pretty like diehard. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Falcons fans really that die hard. No, not really that many Florida fans either. You think about it, the Florida football team, none of them really give a shit. Nope. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, missing. Even the fanfare for Texas, the University of Texas, is kind of you know, kind of died off a little bit because you know uh, those last couple years they haven't been doing so hot. 
So, and you know, the fact that Charlie Strong is in there, he's not making the program look very strong. No, he not at all, man. It's it's funny because he had like a little uh, <laughs> yeah, a little a little uh, scare in the rumor mills about him uh, laying up with one of the boosters' wives. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Charlie Strong down there getting uh. Hopefully that's not true, but, and hopefully it's just somebody trying to set him up. But if that's if that's going on, come on, yeah, come on, dog. They go down there close to the team. You're already behind the eight ball because. Uh, yeah. Left their team in shambles, and they want you just to fix yeah. it in a year, and you can't fix it in a year. They want your ass out. Yeah, yeah, Mac. Yeah, yeah uh, Mac destroyed that shit, man. And it's you know it's apparent they already don't want you there. Hell yeah. Uh, so don't get down there and cause no trouble, man. Just do your job. Well, smashing the the boosters' wives. Yeah, this is the last opportunity that you're going to have at a big school like this. So you better make it work, man. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's crazy, man, about like. Big college jobs, man. Like some of them jobs are not as glamorous as they used to be. Yeah. Because of like schools like Oregon and Utah, and then like you know them using like the the uniforms as this you know as a as a lure to get them to the school. You know, have a different yeah. kind of uniform and shit. Like being like going like the only school that really still has like that the mystique because they're winning is Bama. Yeah. Yeah, keeping it real. All the other schools, like kids, all they care about is like, man, how how hot the jersey is, and can I get to the league? And that's like keeping it real. You can't blame them. Yeah, I I was just about to say uh, that would probably be my outlook as well. Yeah, man, how sweet do I look in these uniforms? Yep. And can I can I get drafted? That's all I would really be worried about, man. And and I really would care about am am I getting drafted? (laughs) Yeah. Man, dude. Yeah, man. Speaking of real quick, man. Then we'll get, you know, we'll get to the topic of the week, man. Speaking of fuck us, man. Like, <laughs> speaking of college, man. That Larry Tunsil, like downfall. Him just like saying everything that happened while he was at school. Yeah. Pretty much just effed up Ole Miss, man. <laughs> <laughs> they put that. Uh, you, you heard about they put that self-imposed sanctions on the school. They are gonna cut half their scholarships. Yeah. Yeah, and all that just because he couldn't shut his mouth up. He couldn't. You know how? Cause, man, that's the one thing. That's the one thing I hate about. You know dumb people and people that get in just situations like that where they get hemmed up. They just like they spill all the beans. Yeah. All right, man, like the bright lights for all them be like, yeah, man, I got money from the school. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, that happened too. I'm like, dude, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting there like shaking my head like, dude, if somebody don't get this nigga, like get him now. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, and I know, I know for sure, man, the coaches are like, man, this shit was not worth it because people were raising an eyebrow the year that they brought him in and Robert um, Kim DG in that year. It's like, wait a minute, how they get these recruits like this, man? Yeah, how did Ole started. Miss yeah. get these recruits? <laughs> <laughs> a school that's famously known for racism. Yeah, exactly, man. And, exactly. You know, and they've never really been uh, inside of the top twenty-five until recently. Yeah. You always yeah. gotta like look at that kind of stuff, man. When I always, when I always see like a new football player come onto the scene and he like the first year he plays is a semi okay year, the next year is like an explosive year. Yeah. I'm always I remember when, like when I'm hanging out with y'all, I'm like, all right, man, he on he, he on the roids, man. He need to get it, he need to get tested. <laughs> <laughs> like every time, I'm like man, he needs to get tested. That's the same thing with schools, man. Like when you you go in a certain way and it just changes all of a sudden. You need to be like, you need to step back and be like, hmm. What's going on here? <laughs> this shit needs to be looked at. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, man. But you know, enough of that, man. Let's go ahead and you know get into the topic of the week. All right, let's get into the, this week's topic. You So for for this week, man, I was just sitting up just chilling one day and I was thinking about people that get on my nerves, man, going back to, you know, Stephen A. Smith. That's how I killed with this topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I was just like, it's like, is there is there really any consequences whatsoever for being a sellout? <laughs> <laughs> like, you can pretty much say what you want, talk bad about your people, your community, and you'll get showered with gifts and money for it. And yeah. you just really don't care about your you don't really don't care about your people, you really don't care about yourself. Like you you pretty much reaping the benefits of, of being a sellout, man. So what yeah. you think, man? Well, I say this, Mm. um, socially, I would say, you know, there are no, well, there are some consequences, but again, it, it depends on your outlook. 
if mm. your outlook is I don't care what you know if people disown me or whatever if if, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you don't care about you know the outlook of what everybody else has to say then no there aren't any consequences that mm. you know you can go ahead and reap the benefits of the others uh you know continue to you know make your life as easy as possible yeah uh, but if you you know if you have a conscience if you have you know, uh, self-respect, if you have, you know, value for yourself, um, then yeah, there, there is a, there is that social consequence that you, you know, you most likely will, will suffer through because I mean, you know, people rag on him all the time, you know, about Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. People may laugh and joke with him, you know, you know, on camera or to his face, but you know, when it, really boils down when things like really start ratcheting up and he needs a place to go he won't be able to come to a black neighborhood and or a mexican neighborhood or you know a puerto rican neighborhood and stay the night because you know (laughs) real (laughs) real people know that stephen a smith isn't a real man yeah Um, you know same thing for uh, uh what's that dude's name from cnn um oh don uh lemonade yes 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 that dude that's He's the, the same thing dude like yeah man you, you gotta think about it because quote unquote you know like st is you know has that claim to you know what we're really talking about but the others man you gotta think about it when they push in that position it's only going to be a certain amount of a number of you know it's a number of you at a time it's not going to be a huge group so in a yeah. sense you are isolated so you got to think about it like man like one day when they're tired of me and they stop they're, they're done using me as that token and they bring in another token yeah what am i gonna have to lean on man and if you just don't have anything to lean on you can be looking ass backwards when you're sitting there like hey man you know we still down and you're gonna be looking like hell no dude all this <laughs> shit you've been saying you better take your ass on somewhere and, yeah. it, and you, you know it comes to the point where like Don Lemon doesn't even really care, man. You and you can tell that he's he's you can, fine. You can, you can yeah. tell he's fine with just taking the taking a little the, the taking the money, living his life. He's good, but he doesn't yeah. understand the damage that he's doing by being a sellout. He, yeah. he it, it's so much damage that you're doing doing it, man. It's ridiculous. It, yeah, and it's second nature now for him to, you know, respond on any matters of the black community or, you know, of any other race, you know, to be honest, is, is worthless. It's not even worth giving him the time of day to even listen to what he has to say, because he's always going to give you this point of view that he's better or that he came from a situation in which he didn't live like most of our people lived. So, you know, he, he, he has that disconnect, you know, he doesn't know what it's like to be, you know, a black person and, you know, who's lived through poverty or who's had to actually struggle for, you know, whatever he has. He's one of those people who probably grew up in a middle class family. uh, But I I guarantee you his parents were probably real niggas. His parents were probably people who grew up in poverty and worked and struggled to make sure that, you know, little Donnie didn't have to worry about you know, where his next meal was coming from. And I I think as far as, you know, them teaching him about his roots, I think they did a poor job with that. Or maybe they did teach him and he just kind of, you know, just kind of went rogue and just decided, you know, I I don't, I don't care about where I come from. This, this, this ain't me. This, this isn't what I know. I know, you know, the finer things in life. I know what's others uh, I used to having. That, that's what I want. I, I don't yeah. you know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna subject myself to being like you know uh, every other black person out here. So like like his his mindset is probably like you know I worked hard for where I'm at, and yeah. you know like he you know he may he may you know work hard for where he was, but he still needs to understand he was he was chosen. It yeah. wasn't from his hard work. He was chosen to be put in that spot. Not gonna just put anybody in that spot. They're gonna put a puppet in that spot. Yeah. And he wasn't he and then once you you know, let me be let me play the devil's advocate on it to be like, you know, what harm in his mind he probably like, man, what harm am I doing? You know, they should want to change, you know, they should want to change their own and what I'm doing is not gonna 
they're not going to, you know, affect the way they change because they, you know, they're good at trash and they're ghetto and you know they didn't yeah. raise up and I worked my I worked my tail off to get here and look at all yeah. the nice things I have and and my and my white picket fence. I worked hard for this and, and, and yeah. you know, and they they can work hard too. Yeah, I can play devil's advocate too because I, you know, in a sense, I see where he's coming from. However, it's different when you know you work hard to get where you're at. And that that's there's nothing there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. For that I applaud him. But when you look down your nose at other people who haven't made it to that point yet, and you you know you treat yourself as if you're better than the next man, that's what pisses people off. That's what yeah. you know th- that that's what gets you the name of being a sellout. It's all right to you know to be you know, uh, to, to, to progress in life. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's, that's the point of life is to progress. That's what life is about. It's all about progression. However, you don't make yourself out to be like you're better than someone else. And that's what, that's his problem. That that's, that's Don Lemon's problem. That's Charles Barkley's problem. Oh that's God. Stephen, oh. Stephen A. Smith's problem. God, I you know, any, Charles. anybody, anybody <laughs> that has like, you know, a vast amount of wealth and portrays themselves as better than the next man. That's, that's the problem with, you know, that's the problem with being a sellout. Yeah, man. That's, that's a huge problem, man. And speaking of, um, speaking of Charles Barkley, man, it, it kind of, you know, not, not talk bad about the brother, man, but when you come, when you come from such poor backgrounds, you really don't have anything. And then you just throw in a whole bunch of money. And you didn't have the the proper education to begin with, like we said on a previous episode, you shouldn't be ta- speaking on matters that come to your community at all when you separate yourself from community. Like you know, you know what? You know, yeah. I'm gonna be mad at all at Don Lemon or, or you know or people. You know, there's a lot. Of, everybody has their own sellout in their own communities. Yeah. So there's sellouts in a you know, white community, there's sellouts in a Hispanic community, there's sellouts in you know black community, there's sellouts in all yeah. of the community. But it just seems like being that sellout is just the the meal ticket to get yourself out of there. But you know, being you know, going back to you know to Barkley real quick, man. If he if he would just not speak on issues, social issues for black people to begin with, I wouldn't have a problem yeah. with it. But he like speaks on like he truly knows what's going on, and he just knows what he's saying is right. He's say, saying something so profound. Like yeah. he, he sounds like an idiot when he speaks, man. Like he, he just does. yeah, he sounds really dumb. Like I kind of like you know how everybody he, loves TNT and they love to like watch the you know the post game show because of them. I just had to stop watching it, man. Especially when all the shoes were happening when they were you know killing a lot of black people. He was siding with police. Yeah, yeah. During that time period, I was like, up. Oh, I can't even watch Inside the NBA anymore. Man. I just can't do it. I don't care what he's saying or funny like the funny stuff that he says and have the stuff he's saying because he's a damn idiot and he and, yeah. To be honest, Charles sounds really uneducated, and you know that's kind of ironic because he came from you know a, a pretty a pretty good school. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think he graduated, I, I, if I'm not mistaken. But you know, it, it just I don't know. It just Charles, man. I just wish he would stop being so much of a coon. If and, and it's funny because yeah, he. He he's kind of like the reverse of Don Lemon because he grew up poor. Yeah. And and he, you know, doesn't represent us very well. As a matter of fact, man, he 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 puts us down more than, you know, more than anybody. He, he he's worse than Stephen A. Smith to be honest with you. Because at least Stephen A. Smith, you know, he'll say something to kind of I guess kind of boost the black community here and there um yeah, to keep his foot in the door like he got like he got like a toe in the door and the other half of his body is out he keeps that toe in he'll say something nice every now and then <laughs> yeah yeah so we know that old trick yeah charles isn't bad he isn't as bad uh, you know to make me not want to watch the post game show anymore because I, I i mean to be honest i don't watch it for him anyway mm-hmm. um you know i watch it for everybody else um but I, I don't know, just just looking at, you know, different, just looking at different people. Sometimes, you know, Shaq kind of scares me because, you know, <laughs> some, like for real, because like, you know, he'll say some kind of off the wall stuff. And I'd be like, wait a minute, huh? 
So, you know, you know, you just, you know, for everybody at home, you just got to watch people. Just, just, you know, watch them because, you know, people get, you know, people get kind of crazy when they, when they have some money, man. Oh, yeah, man. It's just like we always say, man, your true nature, your true character is always shown uh, regardless if you have money or not. And money just intensifies your character. Yeah. Yeah, man, just, it just intensifies it, man. But you know, like man, it's just, like seeing these dudes, like seeing these dudes everyday life, man. It just seems like the worst they get is just like you know Instagram and Twitter trolls, or you know talking to them, you know, bad for a little bit, and that, that's just like the only thing that's you know really being deterrent to them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, especially like somebody that's a, a sellout that just really don't care about their people in whole. Like just take like take like somebody random. Let's take like. A random dude named Ethan Ethan Hunt, and you know he he grew up in a a well-to-do neighborhood, and he was all down for the community, and he, you know he worked his way up, but then he found out that selling out and talking about your your community, let's let's say it's the it's the uh, the the tangerines, and yeah. talking talking bad talking bad about them brings you gifts and financial stability and extra discretionary income. What's gonna be? What's gonna really, you know, stop him from really talking bad about his own people? Yeah. You know, and 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 he getting he getting paid. He was like, oh, still, you know, what's re- what's really the damage I'm doing? I'm not really, you know, I'm not doing any damage. The the tangerines are gonna be the stupid people. They're gonna want to be anyway. So yeah, you know, it's not affecting me, and I'm I'm straight. And, and yeah. so that's all that matters. Yeah. I I mean it, it's. Like I said, if if your outlook is, you know, not being concerned about, you know, the people around you, what they think, then, then yeah, there are no, yeah, there's no consequences for, you know, being a sellout. Yeah. But, you know, if you know you're a person with morals and, you know, a, a person that cares about your community, then, of course, you know, your consequences will be, you know, you know, either a not being able to go back to you know your your origin, or you know, or b you know just I guess enduring what you got coming to you. Yeah, man. Because yeah, I guess it's just the only consequence that they see is just like man, I could. They don't even like see. They don't even see it to the point where they're like, man, I could lose it all, or the people that's giving me these these trinkets and this money won't turn their back on me as long as I'm being a good little soldier. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets tired of, people get tired of you, you know, in an instant, man. People be getting yeah. divorced like it's like it's nothing. What makes you think they can't just get rid of you and get another drone because maybe, you know, he or she looks better and maybe they they pull off the message that they want to send out to the masses better than you. Yeah. Yeah, then what you going to do then? Well, I'm like, and you're going to go back to your community, your community going to look at you like, man, you need to hold your own nuts. Yeah. We ain't gonna be we ain't gonna be there for you. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like so, shit. That, that's another consequence, you know. Yeah. You you losing your spot, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. about that, man. That's, that's kind of stuff that made me make it hard for you to sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're trying to especially if you're in that platform of media, you need people to put you back on top by just putting in, you know, you know, good words, you know, word of mouth. Yeah. You know, saying good things about you, watching your content to get you there, and you know, you know, the others like you know send you off, and you got to come back to the community because that's gonna be your your main base, your mm-hmm. main support base to start back out at. What you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, because the, that that like if, especially if it's like a messy breakup, they're gonna make you look crazy. So that'd be another consequence. Like you know, once they're done with you, they'll just smear you. Yeah. And then the, you had nothing. You won't have any two feet to stand on. Then you looking stupid. And you looking at, back like, "Hey, tangerines, hey, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we cool, we cool, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "Tangerines," we were like, "Man, fuck you, no." Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a consequence that can come of it, man. So, so let's talk about like, I guess, the people who seemingly hate that they are what they are, like. I wish I knew the name of that that guy. He's a he's a um, he's like the captain or you know a, a sergeant or something in Milwaukee. He's a black he's a black policeman. 
Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about, yeah. man. That, that, yeah. like, he knows he's one. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He knows he's black, and he hates he hates himself to the core so much <laughs> that, that he'll persecute anybody else that's black. So you know, and I mean, if you listen to his interviews, you know, you can hear the disdain in his voice of you know just a simple fact of a kid being murdered it's like he's celebrating the fact that this kid is you know dead and it's it's kind of it's kind of sickening but at the same time Mm -hmm. it's kind of intriguing because i i kind of want to ask him like why do you hate yourself like why do you hate what you are Like, like why do you like like do you look at yourself in the mirror and spit like he sees himself as being an inferior human being because He's been told his whole life that he's inferior. Well, that's his fault for believing that crap. Exa- exactly, dude. That's his fault. So, you know, you shouldn't be upset with us because somebody else told you you ain't shit. Like, <laughs> like you should be mad at the person who told you Don't that. you ain't shit. Yeah, man. I think another thing, man, what it boils down to is he just doesn't know his, he doesn't know his background. He doesn't know his culture. I think he doesn't he know knows. his history as his people of, of his people, man. All he pretty much knows his history of is just being a slave. I That's think all he the knows. history you know. You you think so? I think he knows. He just don't give a damn. Some people hate the skin that they're in, man. That's what I'm saying. I I, I think he knows. He just don't care. <laughs> and if he could lock up every black person in Milwaukee, which I'm sure ain't very many, but I'm pretty sure he would. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, those kind of people are the dangerous ones, man. Those are the yeah. real dangerous ones. Like those kind of dudes, you got to just stay away from. You can't even be their friend. You yeah, cut, you got to cut them loose, man. You got to charge them, man. You definitely got to charge them. Ain't yeah. no way, you no way you can stay around those kind of people. Those kind of people will set you up and and make it seem like y'all were never friends to begin with. Y'all could have been lifelong friends since like preschool. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, a, another one that would, he, he's probably not as bad as this guy, but, you know, let's, let's, look, let's look at Herman Cain. <laughs> 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 like, 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 what hole did this nigga crawl out of? Herman Cain is like, <sighs> I don't know. Like, yeah, that, that, yeah, Herman. Herman Cain's been, you know, he's been on the spotlight for a while, but that that guy is just, he seems like another, like, self-hating, uh, another self, just a self-hating person to begin with, man. Because you, be yeah. you can be a self-hating person of, of you know, any race, of, any creed. That's true. You can, yeah, you can pretty much hate yourself. It just is, it just, it's just more prominent in the black community. Yeah. It, more, it, more so than almost any other community to a certain degree, and it's and it's kind of it's, it's sad, man. It's just that you know when you're when you're a black man, mm-hmm. and you know, and you represent you know something as stupid as the Tea Party. I mean, okay, be a black man, be a, be a, be a Republican. That's not that. That's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But but to be you know a willing active member of the Tea Party, which which uh, you know their whole thing is taking America back, quote unquote, you know, (laughs) like, like this man lives at somebody else's house and like he's in the back somewhere and they got like a dog house with, you know, with Herman on the front of the dog house. And that's probably where he stays. Yeah, yeah, man. Just think about taking America back to what it was. And Herman, you think you're not going to be out there too, Herman? Yeah. Yeah. They they see, they they go see you as what, what you are, man. And that's that's the issue. Herman Cain is is funny. He thinks that you know, uh, you know, I guess taking America back to what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Like the funny thing about Herman Cain is like he's not even light enough to be a house nigga. So, <laughs> so how would he? How would he even fit in that that equation? You know, just you know, I, I don't know. But okay, moving on. Yeah, just if when you lose. When you have like a self awareness of who you truly are, and you think you're above somebody just because you're above your own community, just because you got a little bit of cash, yeah. that kind of, that kind of stuff pisses me off. Like man, like one thing that kind of irked me what for real said that one time he had an interview with Oprah, 
It was like a couple years ago now when he was just like, you know, I don't consider myself black. I'm the new black. Uh, and I was just, I was like, okay, what does the new black mean? Does that mean like a, <laughs> you got for real. For Pharrell is trying to be cool. That's all. He he can't. He don't have nothing else to say. He just try to. <laughs> he just tries to say the first thing that comes to his brain. Yeah. It might sound like it could be cool, and that just wasn't one of the times. He just you can't you, know, you can't take Pharrell seriously. He just yeah. over he, over dropped the ball. They should have over should have. Cut that joke short. But like, we're gonna redo this for real because I, I care, <laughs> I care for you and I want this to be a great interview and we're gonna start over, baby. <laughs> for real, just trying to be cool. I, I, I don't, I don't even take that serious. Um, but because you know, at, at least he said the new black. Uh, as long as he didn't say nothing, you know, something dumb like you know, uh, I'm just American or whatever, you know, like. What's her face did? Raven Simone. Yeah, but... speaking of, man, oh God. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> man, seriously, man. Speaking of Raven Simone, though, like you could tell she you could tell she pretty much hates the skin that she's in. Cause if you see her from like when she was on like hanging with Mr. Cooper, even when she was on like Disney shows, she was like a certain hue of a like, you know, a brown and then she's bleached. She's bleached her skin uh, to the to the point where she's almost like ultraviolet, like light now. Have you seen her recently? Yeah, I haven't. Like that, that just ridiculous, man. Like why are you bleaching your skin so much? We we know who we know what you know who you are. We know what you want to be. Most importantly, it, yeah, that too. Uh, yeah, that that's that's really sad, man. And when she was coming out and saying like that, she came out like you said, like for you said, you glad for real didn't say. It didn't say like I'm just American, and he at least he came out and said he the new black. That's what Raven Simone said. You know, I don't consider yeah. myself African American. I consider myself an American. And I was like, if you don't, if you don't you... shut your crusty ass, up, <laughs> you dumb bitch, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that jump really like just boggled my that boggled my mind, man. When she just came out there and says that, and she was. She was like on like a string of like like two or three weeks. She was just saying like just like heinous Stupid. shit, like Stupid. heinous shit. Yeah. yeah, and on the View, dude, I was like just hear about it on Twitter. I'm like, what's she talking about now? And people just going in on her, talking. We don't want you no way. And it'd be somebody would like like so like weave on like the, her like Twitter icon like you need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to her. Like some of those people that you got you kind of to almost to a certain extent you got to ignore them. Yeah. So they'll go away, man. Yeah, so that um, well, Simpsons um episode where it was a Halloween episode. <laughs> where you, you remember the episode where it was like, yeah. you know, like the big icons turn turned into uh they were like big monsters destroying all of Springfield, and Lisa yeah. came with the song was like, just don't look, just don't look. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what everybody do, man. Just don't look, man. Just turn around and let it go. Yeah. And then in the episode when they stopped looking, man, like the because they didn't have any attention, it just died out. <laughs> uh, that joke was hilarious because like people, everybody turned around. And it was like destroying buildings hard. Like please look at me. And then like <laughs> stop looking. They just like they just they just die. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we should treat. That's how everybody should treat all their sellouts in each yeah. of their communities, man. Don't give them the time of day. Don't follow them on. Don't follow them on Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. You know, don't even respond to them when they say something controversial. That's yeah. how you get rid of of sellouts and you know, pretty much just like trolls. But yeah, but that's the thing though, because you know, there's always going to be somebody out there who's going to troll them back and just that's creating my dumbass. Yeah, creating the controversy, and you know, uh, it, it it's just well. Cause to be honest, man, like a lot of it is funny just to see like people get ridiculed for saying stupid stuff. Like that's sometimes can be the most pleasing thing ever. So I don't know, but yeah, it it, it would it would help if we just not pay these people any attention. You know, the, the 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 more we pay attention to them, you know, the more we're gonna see them. So. Yeah, that's definitely true, man. You know, people love to feed into the trolls, man. And the one thing you have to do yeah. is pretty much not feed into it if you can. You got to have that willpower not to feed into the trolls. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the thing, man. But yeah. the way the way things going right now, man, it seems like man, it's it's all up and up, man. To to be a sellout and kids are seeing this stuff, like man, I could talk reckless about my own people. I can, you know, 
and I can kind of get means. I can drive a Bugatti talking shit about my own people. Let's do this. I'm like, <laughs> let's get this done. As long as people see a benefit, man, they see a benefit to doing reckless shit, man, they're going to keep doing it. We have to get some kind of, kind of have some kind of parameters that, that we set to stop sellouts. Yeah, well, th- the problem with that, you know, lies in an economic standpoint. If yeah. if if everybody was well off, I, you know, I don't think we would have you know sellouts. I don't think we would have, especially. I don't think we would really. I don't think we would have as many black sellouts as we do. Yeah. Um, you know if if, but you know this probably goes back into you know um, you know working together and making things happen for each other, which you know won't happen in in the foreseeable future. You know it's just it's it's a problem that's always that's always going to exist. So. Um, but I mean, but with that, you know, I think as long as we can continue to educate people, point what them out. We are really about yeah, yeah. Point them out, man. People need some people are just don't even don't even know what's really going on. They need to be pointed out. Those people need to be pointed out. Yeah, made the example out of them. That too. You know, so many people are misinformed. You know, that is definitely true. People don't know how to think for themselves anymore. Oh yeah, help, man. <laughs> So man, you preaching right now, dog. So when you you know when you're misinformed, and you know you don't know how to think for yourself, more than likely you're gonna have somebody you know from the others that will feed you a bunch of crap to you know to regurgitate on to onto you know other people that will you know bear you any attention. Yeah. So all our real people out here, man. We just gotta you know call bullshit when we see it you know please call it and continue to you know strive to be better man yeah that's, man that's, that's all we can do man that was a damn good topic man this week dog yeah it, it's you know it's sellouts everywhere you know we, we gotta stop so sell out to your job man you know yeah, start there man. ignore them ignore them yeah. ignore them more foes start there start small yeah. and we can go we can go to something big <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Let's stop giving these people attention. Let's stop giving them clicks and let's stop giving them, you know, things that they can profit from. Cause, yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. They eating right now, man. Sellouts are eating right now. So hard. Man. Sell- <laughs> sellouts out here winning. Sellouts out here winning. <laughs> Get these hoes. Sellouts too. Yep. <laughs> I hate getting, getting, pay- getting paid. <laughs> Shoot, man. Like like we say every week, man. Like please, definitely, you know, hit us up. Tell us how we're doing. You know, on Twitter, yeah. Instagram, and you know, what I'm saying uh, YouTube, Audio Mac, Stitcher, you know, iTunes. But our you know our Twitter is at Blank Canvas E C S T. So that's B L A N K C A N V A S E C S T. For the for the people that you know don't want to you know go through the Google search, I help y'all out. And the same thing for Instagram and YouTube. You know, hit us up. Let us know how we're doing. Hit hit that subscribe and like button. You know, say let's build this community, man. Let's go ahead and you know make you know work towards a brighter future and have fun while doing it. Yep. Game one of the NBA Finals tomorrow, man. Who you got? Man, game one, man. Game one, I probably have going probably to the to the Cavs. I think Cavs right. game one just because they 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 rested mm-hmm. and they probably come out a little bit rusty starting out. Uh, yeah, it's coming out the gate, man. But they're gonna be more rested than uh than the, than the team come out the West. So either you know either way, I think I got the Cavs winning game one. But who you got? Who you got game one tomorrow? Man, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to agree with you. Um, just just based off the same principles that you said, you know, rest, and you know, the, but hopefully, you know, the rest won't you know make them too leery, man. Because you know, sometimes rest can be you know an enemy. Because you know, this 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 right here, they but the Warriors just came off what two or three games straight, and yep. you know they they might be pretty hot, you know, coming into game one. So. Speaking of game one, man, real quick, who you got? Who you got winning it all? 
Man, I, I want to see LeBron get it. I want to see him bring one for, for Cleveland just so they can stop aching and, you know, moaning for a championship. Because, yep. you know, they're due one. And, yep. you know, LeBron been trying his whole career to get them one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> trying hard, dude. This man had to leave and come back just to get you <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he can get it done this summer, man. Uh, we'll see, man. I'm, I'm rooting for him, man. I want the Cavs to go ahead and win it, but if if Kevin Love don't come, if he don't come with it, man, they have no chance. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a wrap, man. It's gonna be a wrap. If he don't, if he if he does not show up, it's a wrap. Yeah. So, but that's another episode, episode number eleven. Oh yeah, man. We getting it, we getting them double this. We getting them fresh. We hope everybody had fun this week. Uh, we're we gonna have- continue to keep bringing the heat. You know, every week. Like we do. And, you know, as we say, if there is no light, you must become the light. You know, we hope you guys tune in next week for another episode of the Blank Canvas Podcast. Man, what you, anything else you got left to say to the people, man? Man, you know what I'm saying, man? Keep it tight, man. Keep ten toes down, man. And, you know, watch your backside, man. Let's go ahead and, and, and rise up as a people, man. Love y'all. Yeah, we'll see y'all next week. Episode number 11. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Black Canvas Podcast. We'll see you next week. Ah!